Thou who hast suffered wounds for us, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus, you carried our sins in your own body on the cross so that we might have life. May we and all who remember this day find a new life in you now and in the world to come, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who share faith in Jesus Christ, that God may gather and unite all those who seek the truth with sincerity. Let us pray. Let us kneel. Arise. Almighty and eternal God, source of our unity, look with favor on those who follow Jesus, your Son. Through baptism, we are all consecrated to you. Help us to become one in the fullness of faith and in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way to salvation. Let us pray. Let us kneel. 
Arise. Almighty and eternal God, you desire that all should be saved. Enable those who do not believe in Jesus Christ to accept him as their Lord and Savior. Help them grasp the mystery of the Incarnation so that they may come to know, love, and serve him and thus become faithful witnesses of his gospel. We ask this in his holy name. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. May they receive the gift of faith that they may come to believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Let us pray. Let us kneel. Arise. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity in your own image and likeness. Grant grace to those who do not believe in you, so that they all might come to acknowledge you as the one true God and Father of us all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God may guide their minds and hearts to govern justly and honestly. Let us pray. Let us kneel. Arise. Almighty and eternal God, watch over those in public office, so that they may fulfill their duties in accordance with your divine commandments and principles. May all their deliberations and actions be for the benefit of those whom they serve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray that God may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and help those who suffer because of poverty, falsehood, hunger, and disease. Let us pray. Let us kneel. Arise. Almighty and eternal God, our merciful Father, give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call upon you in any type of trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your grace and healing in their need. May we become instruments of your love and mercy in this world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of our world. Behold the wood of cross on which hung the Savior of our world. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy upon us.
Lord, for us your wounds were suffered. O Christ Jesus, have mercy upon us. Lord, for us your wounds were suffered. O Christ Jesus, have mercy upon us. Lord, for us your wounds were suffered. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, receive us who bow before you in contrition and humility, and grant that the sacrifice be so offered in the sight to be pleasing to you, O Lord God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. Psalm 116. I said in my alarm, no one can be trusted. How can I repay the Lord for all the good done for me? I will raise the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Too costly in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Lord, I am your servant, your servant, the child of your hand, servant. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of Jerusalem. Alleluia. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Psalm 120. The Lord answered me when I called in distress. Lord, deliver me from lying lips, from treacherous tongues. What will the Lord inflict on you, O treacherous tongue, and what more besides? A warrior sharpened arrows and fire, fiery coals of brushwood. Alas, I was an alien and meshek. I lived near the tents of Kadar. Too long did I live among those who hated peace. When I spoke of peace, they were for, for word. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 140. Deliver me, O Lord, from the wicked, preserve me from the violent, from those who plan evil in their hearts, who stir up conflicts every day, who sharpen their tongues like serpents, Venom of asps upon the lips, Shalom. Keep me, Lord, from the clutches of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent who plot to trip me up. The arrogant have set a trap for me. Villains have spread a net, laid snares for me by the wayside, Shalom. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Listen, Lord, to the words of my prayer. My revered Lord, my strong helper, my helmet on the day of battle. Lord, do not grant the desires of the wicked. Do not let their plots succeed. Shalom. Around me they raised their proud heads. May the mischief they threatened overwhelm them. May God rain burning coals upon them, cast them into the grave, never more to rise. Slanderers will not survive on earth. Evil will quickly entrap the violent. For I know the Lord will secure justice for the needy, 
their rights for the poor. Then the just will give thanks to your name. The upright will dwell in your presence. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatane, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Magnificent. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked upon with favor his lowly servant. From this day all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished, and bowing his head, he handed over the Spirit. Christ humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your greatness. In your abundant compassion, blot out all my offenses. Wash away all my guilt, from my sin cleanse me. For I know my offense, my sin is always before me. Against you alone have I sinned. I have done such evil in your sight that you are just in your sentence, blameless when you condemn. True, I was born guilty, a sinner, even as my mother conceived me. Still you insist on sincerity of heart. In my inmost being, teach me wisdom. Cleanse me with hyssop, that I may be pure. Wash me, make me whiter than snow. Let me hear sounds of joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins. Blot out all my guilt. A creed, a heart, O Lord, a clean heart create for me. God, renew in me a steadfast spirit. Do not drive me from your presence, nor take your Holy Spirit. Restore my joy in your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. I will teach the wicked your ways, that sinners may return to you. Rescue me from death, God, my saving God, that my tongue may praise your healing power. Lord, open my lips. My mouth will proclaim your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, a burnt offering you would not accept. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit. God, do not spurn a broken, humbled heart. Christ humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross.
Let us pray. Lord, we ask you to look upon the family of your faithful people, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ could not resist betrayal into the hands of evil men, or the torments of the cross, in order to show us the way to salvation. Grant us faith in your infinite mercy, a love for truth, and the hope of eternal happiness. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Taken from the Gospel of John. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, as I recall the passion and the death of Jesus, only 33 years of age. It so moves me, as I hope it, sir, it moves you. The intensity of the suffering to this healer of the sick, to this young rabbi who taught so many of the love of God on this Good Friday we pause and remember him. There are times that I shake my head and I wonder, what has our world become? For on this day there will be so many who will have today pass as another day. There will be so many who have been baptized into the faith or who have called themselves Catholic or Christians, that they will ignore the importance of this day. You know, on that first Good Friday, there were so few who came out to offer Jesus love and devotion 
in his final moments. For three hard and difficult years, he came to give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, the ability to walk to those crippled, and to heal those who suffered from leprosy and other diseases. How he came to preach the good news of God's kingdom to the poor, the destitute and the outcast. How he gave hope to the hopeless and showed them through his teachings and healings that God was present ever with them. And most importantly, that God loved them. How unselfish was Jesus to the world and how selfish our world was and is to him. He was abandoned by his disciples, save Peter. He stood alone before those who would mock and strike him. And after those of the Sanhedrin, the chief priest and others sought him dead, they needed to wash their hands clean and to turn Jesus over to the Romans who cared so little about Jesus or the Jewish nation. Pontius Pilate, the Roman procurator of Galilee, could not understand why Jesus was so hated by the Jewish authorities. To try to pacify their cravings for his death, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Praetorian Guard who would beat him ridicule him and crown him with thorns. But it still did not stop there. To try to satisfy their craving for his blood, Pilate also had Jesus whipped 40 lashes save one with a cat of nine tail, whose end many times were either steel balls or even parts of animal bones that was to rip deeply into his body. In so many cases, this scourging caused death. Behold the man Pilate pronounced to the maddening crowds after Jesus was scourged and beaten. And after, even after all this, the religious elements of the temple could only cry out, crucify, crucify him. I am sure that there were also those present who cried out for mercy, but they were in the minority and they were drowned up with the words crucify, crucify him. Finally, after all his attempts to free Jesus, having found in him no wrong, Pontius Pilate had no other choice but to wash his hands clean and turn our Lord over to be crucified. Do with him as you will. Beaten and bleeding, Jesus was forced to carry his own instrument of death through the streets and eventually to Golgotha. The jeers, the insults, and I'm sure that there were many in the crowd who spat on him and goaded him, goaded him unto his death. So at Golgotha, the place of the skulls, they stripped Jesus of his tattered clothes and stretched his bloodied and battered body on the cross. As a final insult, they nailed his hands and his feet to the cross and raised him up to see a new mockery. I am sure that our Lord during this entire ordeal cried out in a physical pain but kept silent. His back was ripped open from the whips, whip, his body weakened from the loss of blood, and his feet to the cross as hands were nailed. 
If you are the Christ, come down from the cross and we will believe. Yet we hear from Holy Scripture that he opened not his mouth to defend himself. And amid all of this, what else does Jesus do in his ag agony? He refuses vinegar mixed with gall. That would deaden his pain. And looking down at his tormentors and executioners said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Even in the end, Jesus asked God to forgive all. From nine o'clock in the morning until three in the afternoon, Jesus struggled to rise himself up to breathe. And after six hours, he finally cried out, it is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, so what can we take away from this Good Friday? I hope it is a time that we all might be moved with sorrow for our Lord. I hope it is a time for us to reflect upon Jesus in our lives. I hope it is a time in which none of us will abandon him as many did and as many do today. I hope it would be a time which none of us would be willing to wash our hands and say it is not my concern. I hope it would be a time that if we could, we would willingly help to carry the cross and not be compelled to do such a thing. Good Friday is a time when the words of Jesus should never be forgotten. When he said, there is no greater love than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. Good Friday, my brothers and sisters, is a time of renewal, a personal commitment that we will never turn away from the Lord. Good Friday is a time of conversion and commitment, a time of renewal to follow him and make him the Lord of our lives. At this most difficult time in which so many are suffering, from the cross, the message is given to all of us, a message of forgiveness, a message of hope, and most importantly, a message of love. May we love one another as he loved us. And may we see the suffering of others and help to carry their crosses. For to us is given the reward of eternal life in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.